So in the last ZBrush and Substance Painter Pipeline video, we talked about how to bake high poly to low poly. And because our high poly was over a million polys, we used ZBrush to bake the normals and displacement maps. Also, we created a very dirty UV using UV Master and just pressing and wrap. Now, let's say you have something like this and you want to have different colors or materials or paint these different areas like this top area, this area, this inside area with different materials or colors. If I go into Z plugin and just press unwrap, I'm gonna have a UV map that looks something like this. And if I come into Painter and I wanna paint a different color, for example, for this area, and then a different color for this area up here, that's gonna be a bit difficult. I can even come to the, my 2D view and try to come here and paint that, which starts bleeding out to the other areas. So it's gonna be really hard. I could load up my paintbrush by pressing B, P, A, and start painting on this. Just select these areas that I wanted. But a better way to do that would be by polygroups. My favorite way to create polygroups is coming down to polygroups and use the groups by normals. Now my mesh is on the highest subdivision level and that's going to create different groups on the edges that I don't want. So I'll just come down to my lowest subdivision. As you can see I already have polygroups up in here but I'll do it anyway. So if I just press groups by normals this is the result I get. So I get different polygroups for the different areas that I like. So for this example, this works fine. If I come out of polyframe and I go down to polypaint and press polypaint from polygroups right away, I'm going to have this result. Because to use this function, I need to be in a very high density mesh. It works with density. So if you have a low poly mesh, this is going to happen. Now I can come back up to geometry, go up to my highest subdivision, Come down polygroup, polypaint, polypaint from polygroups, and I have a better result. But still, you can see there's still a little bit of bleeding right there. That would probably not happen if my mesh was higher poly. My mesh is 264,000 polys, and I had that little bit of bleeding. Now, I'm going to show you another way to do this, and if that one doesn't work. Because I have these in polygroups, I can press Control shift click an area of my mesh, and then if I come to Color, and you got to make sure that you are in RGB. So if I come in Color, I'm just going to select red color here, and I press Fill Object. Let me just bring everything back by Control shift clicking So let me go to this area here, and I'll just select a different color. Let's go for a yellow this time, Fill Object. Control shift click now this area here now the color here let's go green fill object Control shift click this area here fill object and finally for our sphere so I'm selecting really op opposite colors in the spectrum really different colors this is important this is what's called a clown pass. So it's very different colors. It looks like a clown in a way. So now that we have all this poly paint, we can use this in Substance Painter to create our ID maps. Now because my eyes subdivision is well under a million polys, I'm not going to worry about making normals in ZBrush like we did in the, in the last video. I'm just going to go straight up and export my mesh as a FBX and export this as my low. I'll say ZBrush Poly Paint Low. Uh, actually, I. And that was fast enough. Okay, file exported. Now, my low subdivision is a bit ugly. This is not enough polygons to create uh, a good result in Substance Painter. So instead of going to my lowest subdivision, I'm just going to go and have something like this. This is a bit more round. This is going to produce better results. I'm not going to see those faceted faces in, um, in Substance Painter. So I'll 
I'll use my subdivision level 2 here and export that as my low. And let's go into Substance Painter. I'll just go Fly New as my Poly Paint low. Say OK. I'll just discard that. Go into my Texture Settings. Make Mesh Maps. Select my Air Poly Mesh. So, Poly Paint Type Poly. I don't need thickness. And in my ID map, the um, the default is vertex color, and we have that. That's exactly what we did in ZBrush. We painted our vertex. So I'll back. I bought the the maps, and now we have an ID map. This guy right here. Now, if I go into my layers, I just have a fill layer. I don't need that layer, so I'll just delete it. And don't need any of this for this example. Just the color. I'll select the red color here. And I'm going to add a type of mask that is called Add Mask with Color Selection. And this is going to give me this option to pick color. As soon as I press Pick Color, it's going to show me my ID map and I pick, can pick a color. Let's pick this yellow here. Now this yellow is going to be affected by this color that I added. And I can keep doing this for all the other channels. So I can add another one. Fill channel. Right click. Add mask with color selection. Press pick color. I'm going to pick this red color now. And it's in white here. So I'll just do what I did to the other one. And I'll pick another color this time. And so we get this result. Of course, you can also use folders. So if I add a new folder here and place material in that folder, I can right click the folder, use the same process, and add that material there. If I look around in the sphere, I'm probably going to see a seam here somewhere. Here we have, there's a seam. Get rid of this. You can come here and instead of UV projection, you can select Triplanar projection and you won't see your seam anymore. Don't forget to like and subscribe, press the bell symbol for new videos, support me on Patreon if you can. And if you want to see a recap of this video at any time, you can just follow this link and I'll see you on the next video.